gang, the last 10 years has felt like an amazing party with low interest rates and rising home prices, creating an amazing time for everybody in real estate. But with the Fed's rising interest rate to more than double what they began in 2022, it feels like the party is over and like every great party, the question now is, how bad is the hangover going to be? So Data Dave is going to grind through all of our real estate data and give you the predictions of what to expect in 2023, answer the question of how to prepare for the next year, and how to deal with the end of this party. Let's take a look. With the month of data already in for 2023, we'll use that to tell you exactly what's going on and look back a bit to see what's going to happen in our market for the months to come. And we'll begin by looking at closed sales because, gang, you're going to be hearing a lot this year about demand being down. And we see that just under 2,100 home sales is over 30% lower than last year. And that's a trend we've been seeing since about June of 2022 when the sharp rise in interest rates put a harsh end to the real estate party and the hangover set in. But look, gang, eventually the hangover wears off. And if we look at pending sales, a leading indicator of demand, we do see that homebuyers are accepting the new normal and are starting to come back. While we are still down nearly 20% in pending sales, if we look at the monthly trend, we see that number decreasing and that it's the most positive number we've seen since June when the hangover started. So expect demand to continue to be lower in early 2023, but balance out to be fairly flat as the weather warms up. As always, once we know what demand is doing, we need to check on supply. And new homes listing tells us with nearly 3,300 homes, new supply is down about 10% from a year ago. So with demand dropping quicker than supply, we see total inventory on the market is 15% higher than last year and a bit higher than January 2021. But gang, we are learning we can't come compare much to the pandemic years. If we go back further, we see our current inventory is the lowest of any years outside of the pandemic years. Still 34% lower than 2020 just prior to the shutdown, 58% lower than the January of 2015 when we were still in a seller's market, and 81% lower than the peak of the housing bubble in 2008. So for the rest of 2023, we will continue to see the incoming supply down, but slower than demand, which will add some much needed inventory to the market. And as demand drops quicker than supply, we'll continue to see the magic number of months of supply move up, as it did in January, bumping up 44% to 1.3 months. But remember, gang, that's a long way from the five months of inventory we need just to have a balanced market and even further away from the numbers we saw leading into the bubble bursting. And for the people that subscribe to this channel, you know that that low months of supply number will keep prices moving up. And about at 342000 prices were up nearly 3% compared to last year. However, we do have a unique situation. Look, last year we saw the competition for homes pushing prices well above asking price. With fewer buyers and increasing inventory in 2023, we'll see less of that and we'll likely see prices pull back a bit during those spring and summer months that pushed prices up beyond fair value in 2022. Subscribe now, gang, and we'll keep you posted every month of any changes, but there's what to look forward to in 2023. An overall slowdown throughout the St. Paul and Minneapolis real estate market, but definitely nothing resembling the bubble years.